Hi and welcome back to another story from Reddit, Tales from Tech Support. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for future content. Let's now get straight into today's video. License Code Russian Roulette Many years ago, back before I went into business for myself as an IT consultant, I worked at an MSP help desk doing some contract work while I was between jobs. It was a short-term contract of three months with a pretty high hourly rate considering low technical level of the job. The recruiter had trouble filling the position and was delighted when I accepted. The online research I performed suggested it would be an okay place to work for just a few months and, heck, I needed to money. So off I went for my first day. Did you just move in? I showed up at the address and was astonished to see an office full of boxes, clutter, a ND half set up workstations. It looked like the company had performed a quick relocation over the weekend and was still unpacking halfway through Monday morning. After waiting for about 15 minutes at reception, staffed by a temp, never a good sign, the manager finally greeted me. It guy, my name is it guy and recruiter placed me here. I'm sure you got all the paperwork. Happy to be joining the team. Manager. Oh yeah, that all came over the weekend, but I was so busy I almost forgot. As you can see things are sort of hectic around here. Let me show you to your workstation. We are swamped this morning. This place was more disorganized than a failed state. Office furniture was partially assembled. Wires strewn all over the place. People running around chaotically. And no organization readily apparent at all. Finally after navigating the maze of clutter, we get to my workstation, which is a card table, folding chair, laptop, and IP phone. You have one client. The manager gave me a rundown of their system and login credentials. The briefing took about 10 minutes. I was VIP support for one of their preferred clients and my sole job was to take calls from their staff. My instructions were clear. Tickets will be routed to me from this one customer and I am to resolve them as quickly as possible. If anything needs to be escalated I have one point of contact which I found out later was the owner of the company. That is it. I am to do nothing else than support this one customer. The manager gave me strict instructions not to help out anyone else and to stay close to my area. I was to only respond to tickets for the customer, period. If I left my desk I was to notify my point of contact and I should keep that to a minimum. Otherwise, I could do whatever in my downtime, listen to music, read a book, browse the internet, the manager made it abundantly clear he could care less as long as I was on top of any call from this client. I have to run. Your point of contact should be reaching out to you sometime this morning. If you have any questions just call that number, the manager said while glancing at his watch. The phone rings. To say I was a little perplexed by the situation would have been a mild understatement. This was an odd setup, but not unheard of in the MSP business. Figuring it would all make sense in a while I settled in and took a tour around the environment. My workstation was locked down. Just an internet browser, some documentation for the client on the desktop, remote administration software, and a few other odds and ends. Ticketing system interface only showed me any open ones for the client I was assigned and the documentation of their systems was bare bones. About an hour in, the phone rang, so I picked it up. Not knowing what to say I just made something up on the fly. It guy, hello this is the help desk for company, my name is it guy. How can I help you? On the other end was a billowing voice that sounded like he was screaming into a speaker phone. For the sake of the story we will call him Ed. Ed, hey IT guy, this is point of contact, I am the owner of the company, glad to have you on board, let's break down what your next three months will look like. 
I was surprised that my sole point of contact for this client was the owner of a rather large MSP. That was also unusual, and it was about to get a little stranger. Ed ran down the client details. It was a small boutique shop that did a lot of data analysis. They paid big bucks to keep their users up and running. Support issues were mostly routine, password resets, lockouts, VPN issues, and software installs. It was, in fact, one application in particular that would give me the most tickets. Ed, so the client uses this one proprietary program that is really advanced. It is their primary analysis tool, but the problem is that it is unstable. Crashes all the time. Throws out false errors. Does weird things like that. We have tried to work with the developer to address the various issues, but for whatever reason we can't get them resolved. So, the main troubleshooting you will be doing is fixing this application. Ed then ran down the main techniques that would be used. The first step was a simple uninstall, run a custom script to clean up junk files, and then reinstall. I was to perform this action twice and if it still didn't work direct the client to overnight, early delivery, their workstation which would then get a new image and sent back out the same day. Ed, the most important thing about the whole troubleshooting process for that application is the license codes. They are on a Word doc on your desktop. Then he stressed, it is extremely important that any time you input one of those license codes that you copy and paste it to the bottom of the list. Always use the top code and once you have used it put it on the bottom. Just cycle through those codes until one works only inputting it once time even if it fails. Do you understand? It guy, yeah, sure, sounds easy enough. So is this all you want me to do? Ed, yes that is it. Your job is to only do what I have told you. Fill in your downtime doing whatever, just stay by your desk if at all possible. And if you have any questions call me directly at this number. No one else there will be able to answer your question so just call this number if you need anything. Got it? It guy, yup, sounds easy enough. With that Ed got off the phone which left me sitting all alone at my card table desk, among half unpacked boxes in an empty area of the huge office. Okay, this is weird. I thought to myself. My first ticket. The first day flew by and not a single call or ticket. It was rather boring seeing that I was unprepared for all the free time, so the next day I brought in a few books and my personal laptop, wondering if most of my days would be so uneventful. About an hour in the phone rang. The caller was angry. Caller, my MFRF ing pos computer locked up again. This always happens. It guy, hello there, let's take a step back and see what I can do to help. Caller, oh great, a new guy here, I can tell you what you need to do. Reinstall this stupid program. This happens I swear every week or two and always when I have a deadline coming. I got on a remote desktop session, and quickly was able to diagnose the issue was the proprietary program Ed had told me about. The error said something about invalid license key and a few other random codes. It guy, as you identified I am new at this, but according to my documentation I need to reinstall this program to get it to work. This is my first time doing this procedure so I don't know how long it will take me to go through the troubleshooting guide, if you hang with me we will get through this. Caller, I can tell you it will take about an hour because this happens like once a week. Let's just get this done. I need to finish this report by 5 p.m. Over the next hour I walked through the step-by-step -step guide that was on my workstation desktop. Mostly just a lot of clicking and cleaning up. Ran the custom script Ed told me about and then reinstalled the application package. Most of the time was waiting but the caller wasn't interested in small talk. Finally got to the last step which was to enter the license code. 
Remembering the specific steps Ed imparted to me I tried to first code. The program attempted to register for a few minutes then kicked back an error saying, license code in use. Thinking that was odd I asked the caller if he has seen that before. Oh yeah, happens all the time, something to do with a bad developer key I am told, he said. So I tried the next code after copying the failed code to the bottom of the list. This time it worked. Great I think that is it, I thought to myself. It guy, okay try to open up the application and let me know if everything seems to be working. Caller, after clicking around a lot, yup seems to be up and running. Thanks IT guy. I will probably be talking to you in a week or two with the same issue though so until then. I opened up a ticket, documented it according to the guide, and then closed it out. If this is the extent of the work I have for the next three months this is going to be easy street, I said to myself. The next few weeks. The caller was correct and over the next few weeks my ticket log was mostly just the same issue with the same fix. About three a day and one out of four times I would have to direct the user to send in their workstation for a full wipe. It was around the two-week mark that I started to notice a pattern. I would fix a workstation and then a few hours later I would get a call from the next person with the same issue. Then I noticed that I could make a list of the users that would call in and it was a regular rotation. After I fixed their problem and put them on the bottom of the list they would cycle through. I could even use that list to predict who would be my next call. Of course, I was naturally curious to the entire situation, but the one time I asked Ed for some clarification on one of his many check-in calls he blew up at me told me that my job was to fix the error using the procedure I was given and that was it. And if anyone asked about anything I was to give them this number to call. End of story, understood, is how the conversation ended. I needed the job, the pay was good, the work was easy, so that was the last time I asked any questions until a few weeks later, and I had my suspicions as to what was going on, but even if I was right it didn't matter. One day after work. It was about a month into my contract and I was walking out of the office. One of the techs got my attention in the parking lot to tell me some guys were going to happy hour. Now my work area was in an empty part of the office and because I wasn't supposed to leave my desk I had interacted very little with the others who worked there. And when I did it was mostly pleasantries. They knew I was a contractor and would be gone soon enough leaving little interest in getting to know me. But today was different and this outgoing guy told me to come along and grab a beer with him and the team. Only having an empty house waiting for me, I went along. The conversation was light until the alcohol started flowing. These guys weren't in it just for happy hour. They were clearly hunkered down for the night like this was an almost daily ritual. And around hour two is when the lips started to get loose. Drunk tech. So you are the guy who has, the client, making air quotes when he said, client. It guy. Yeah I guess that is what you mean, it is just one company and all I do is work supporting them. Drunk tech. Oh yeah that is, the client, we are never supposed to talk about and if they ever call the main number always just send it to the owner. It guy, sounds like my assignment, guess it must be a big money account to get such attention. I asked trying to pry. Drunk tech. Oh it is something, Ed, the owner, thinks we have no clue what he is up to. But the last guy figured it out. It guy, figured what out? The work is a little, dot odd to say the least. Drunk tech. Yeah it is going to bite Ed in the behind one of these days, but let me fill you in. The scheme. Turns out my suspicions were right. The proprietary software used by the company was expensive with a license costing upwards of $100,000 per year per user. The company had about 20 analysts using it on a regular basis and through some happenstance figured out that they could be running more than the number of paid licenses usually for a few days before the program, called home, 
and registered the duplicate code in use then locking the application up. It didn't take long for the president of that company to figure it was cheaper to contract with an MSP to play Russian roulette with the license codes instead of just buying one for each user. All the MSP had to do is keep cycling through the license codes by constantly reinstalling the program, using scripts to clear all the log registry files, and as a backstop measure just doing a complete wipe in the event the scripts didn't catch an updated fraud prevention measure. Ed, the owner, was being handsomely paid to keep this scheme going, enough so that he could hire rotating techs that were paid enough to not ask questions and cycled out frequently enough that they would not care. What surprised me is that the central registration server didn't spit out red alerts when the same codes were being used over and over again despite the fact that it would disable access to the application if a duplicate appeared. Guess not every fraud prevention system is foolproof. Or maybe something in the scheme addressed this point. If so I never uncovered it. The end. I finished up my three-month contract and happily left for another gig that was more engaging. It was partially all the downtime I had while doing this job though that led me to consulting work which would later turn into my own business and that is what I remember most about this job. What happened to Ed, the MSP, and the revolving license code scheme? I have no idea other than about a year later the same recruiter called me up to ask if I was interested in the position again. I respectfully declined. TLDR took a short-term contract at an MSP doing help desk work. Ended up being involved as an unintentional conspirator in a minor software piracy scheme where the MSP worked with another company to avoid purchasing the number of licenses for those who were actually using the software, probably saving that company hundreds of thousands of dollars in the process.